Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our series software testing bootcamp. We're talking about the chapter one basics of software testing and looking forward to continue with the next topic which is 1.4 test process. As a part of this topic we will be understanding what is the software testing lifecycle which is embedded within the software development lifecycle and as a part of it what are the major phases what are the major activities which we perform and who should be responsible for that in order to get started the very first thing is a quick introduction to what exactly test process is all about and what kind of factors influence a test process team when you talk about the test process test process is the way by which you test an application and this way can be defined as a process and set of activities which are generally planned uh, designed executed and monitored throughout the overall process but a process of testing can certainly be influenced by several factors which are listed here and these factors should be taken into account by a person called as test manager who should be responsible to take care of all the parameters and these factors which influence or decide what should happen in your test process altogether. For an example, when you talk about software development cycle itself, this is the very first factor which comes into consideration. Because if you just try comparing a waterfall model with that of to the agile model, the testing varies. The set of activity, the amount of work product, the various reports which you populate are different. In fact, in order to test something, we have to write test cases, which we'll be learning in a short while. And uh, we, we, we need a set of requirements uh, you know, formally documented in order to understand what the expectations are. Where so comparatively, when it comes to EGL, we hardly write a very brief high level requirement called as user story. So there are variations and we need to understand how to align. Whereas traditional models are longer in duration, EGLs are shorter in duration. So we have to perform necessary test activities while within a short iteration like sprint. So contributing with uh, people who are you know, working together like in a scrum team and many other things which you take into account, right? So testing certainly varies right from the STLT model in place. The test level, the test types being considered not all, every time for every single project, uh, all the test types and test levels will be organized and conducted. Some of the levels are sometime out of scope. So you need to design that what you will be doing and in case these certain specific uh, non-functional levels are in scope, then what exactly will you be doing in order to, you know, organize those events when exactly you want to kick off with those events, right? Uh, when you would start the parallel planning of the non-functional testing. So every single level has to be taken into account in order to decide how much time would you need and at what point of the cycle will you kick off with these engagements or start involving those QAs. Similarly, product and project risk, uh, which is uh, the risk analysis of the project. And we try understanding and listing down the projects and product risk. If there are risks associated, your testing will be more concentrating on that side. For example, a requirement with high severity risk associated with it will have more number of test cases and certainly will be executed much earlier than any other requirement. And uh, on the other hand, if a requirement does not have any risk associated, we may be you know, prioritized low and will be performed probably later in the life cycle. So this is another factor which you need to take into account in order to decide your overall flow of the test process. The domain certainly adds a lot of value, like you do not test two different products uh, in the same way. So you just learned the principle number six in our previous tutorial and you understood that testing is context dependent, thus your test process will also be different when you talk about different products. Adding more to it, organizational constraints, budgets, resources, time scale, complexity, contractual, and regulatory requirements are all one or the other way contributing to your overall test process and uh, will influence what set of actions, what set of activities, uh, when and who will start these work, right? Who will be responsible for doing that, identifying the resources, many other things which will be uh, dependent on the operational constraints as well. Organizational policies and practices, it, it sometimes matters that uh, when you come about 
when you talk about the development models like uh, waterfall or agile there would be some uniqueness added from the organization level maybe your organization policy does not allow you to do that and there are certain standards which are set up at the organization level that hey when it comes to user stories we will be using story points rather than writing the number of hours right so you can take all these factors into account and required internal and external standards talking about safety critical devices like elevators or airborne systems automotives everywhere the requirements are not the primary key more of that is the standards which you follow because your product should be adhering to requ- uh, the standards more than the requirement so of course these standards will still be driving your overall process and telling you that what you should be doing at what point of time and what kind of artifacts what kind of alignment you need to have right so putting it up all together the overall context of the test process is to make sure that considering all the factors uh you know keeping into account considering them in more detailed analysis and then deciding what will be your final overall test process in order to test a particular project additionally i'm just introducing you to the test process in a very very uh you know generalized manner because of course the phases might differ depending on the different product but generally you have these phases for sure so generally a test process comprises of seven standard phases including test planning test monitoring and control test analysis test design test implementation test execution and test completion right and now test monitoring and test planning are basically at one stage where you set it up but considering monitoring and control are an ongoing uh, activity throughout the project so they are independent right but don't worry we'll be talking everything in very very detailed explaining you each and every phase talking about set of activities which are organized and conducted within it and we'll be helping you to also relate things that who should be responsible within an organization to perform these activities and that will be getting started right in our next tutorial and we'll be talking about very detailed that what are these things and how do we do that so that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning